All right, guys, what's going on? Kyle Welcher here. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you want to learn more about flipping, this is the very video that you need to watch now. Or if you just like watching me catch a few flipping and you think you don't have anything to learn, that's fine too. We're probably gonna catch a couple flipping day, at least we're gonna try. We're down here in the south in Alabama. It's August right now. We've got a lot of mill, uh, not mill foil, hydrilla down here. We've got some overhanging bushes. We've got some rocks. We've got a lot of isolated cover to flip and it's extremely hot and the fish are moving back up shallow. Getting a lot of these brim bed stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I do for flipping, kind of why I choose certain baits and when I choose them and kind of just the rod that I leave on the front deck all the time for flipping. So to start off right here, we have a seven foot six, heavy, fast, point blank. That's the rod I use for flipping all the time. This is actually a Shimano Cronarch MGL, 8.2 to one gear ratio. That's the reel I use all the time for flipping. And we have a 25 pound fluorocarbon. So people ask me what size fluorocarbon to use that varies by brand. Just make sure that you have one with a 0 0.40 diameter of a, that's actually 0 0.40 millimeters. Make sure your line is at least that thick, if not th thicker, if you're gonna be flipping heavy wood with fluorocarbon, which is what we're primarily doing today. So I'm gonna show you right now how I rig this sucker up. All right, guys, I'm gonna show y'all how I rig my flipping rod up. This is the exact setup I leave on the front deck almost all the time. I will deviate rarely, but for the most part, this is it. So take a bobber stop. Everybody knows how to, how to put a bobber stop on. You just take it and run the line through this little piece of metal right here. Grab the rubber bobber stop and pull it up onto the line, and then you have a bobber stop on your line. So bobber stop's on here. From there, take a half ounce tungsten weight. That's what this is right here. That's my standard half ounce. This is a Titan tungsten. I, that's the normal one that I'm flipping with almost all the time is a half. Go from there straight to a five volt straight shank hook. Straight shank's extremely important. I always, always, always flip a straight shank. The only deviation to that is when I'm flipping a worm and then I'll flip an offset round bin. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Five volt straight shank is what I do. I always tie a snail knot. So I run that snail knot in over the eye of the hook, over the point of the hook, always has to come in from this direction. Okay, take that snail knot or you take your tag in, you lay it down the shank of your hook, just like this. So you've got the bait keeper. What, I, what I'm referring to the bait keeper is this black piece right here. So take that and I'll actually make a loop on the shank of the hook, run it down, pinch it in my fingers, make a loop on the shank of the hook. Then I hold the snail knot and I wrap it around right above this little bait keeper right here. So from the bait keeper, I wrap it right on top of the bait keeper, cascading like upwards towards the eye of the hook. I'll usually wrap it six times when I'm using fluorocarbon. If I'm using light braid, I'll wrap it a little bit more. Five, six, okay. Now I've got a tag in, I've got the loop right here that I just made on the shank of the hook and the tag in. Before I release this loop that I made, I pinch the entire knot down like this. This knot is not tied, but it's pinched in between my fingertips. Then I take the tag in, run it through this loop and just pull it down with the main line. Now I don't pull it down very hard with the main line. The reason for that is I don't wanna burn it before I wet it. So I've got it relatively tight right now and I'll take it and I'll just wet it. Pull the tag, pull the main line a little, then I pull the tag in very, very hard because if I burn the line at all, I want it to be below the knot and not on top of the knot. So right there, it's extremely, extremely snug. Very, very good knot, but at the same time, you can't set the hook extremely hard with a snail knot on fluorocarbon because the snail knot is not quite as strong as something like a double pitson. The snail knot is probably about as strong as a polymer, but it's not as strong as a double pitson. So right there, that is my normal flipping rig. I leave it on the front deck. I mean, day in and day out the entire year. Half ounce weight, bobber stop, five alt straight shank hook. That's what I do, guys. That's exactly what I do. And you see me flipping, that's pretty much what I am flipping. So let's grab a bait and put it on this sucker. These are the three main baits that I'm gonna flip. I mean, throughout the course of a year, if I'm not flipping a jig, this is what I'm gonna be flipping. Number one, I'm gonna be flipping a small crawl style bait. This is very narrow, very small profile. And what this does, it gets in and out of cover very, very good. I'll do this a lot in the fall whenever the bite's super, super tough, pre-spawn and super clear lakes. This is something that I really like. Seems like when the water's a little bit more stained, you want something like these, these, crawls, these claws right here really give off a very consistent vibration in the water. So every time that bait moves, the claws give off a very consistent and a, a lot of vibration for the size. So that's one of the deals I'm gonna fish this a lot around. A little bit deeper, a little bit more clear water and stuff like that whenever I feel like I'm trying to draw the fish from a long way or if the water's you know relatively stained a little bit but I'm still fishing deeper, I want something super consistent for me to flip and still get in heavy cover, that's something I'm gonna do. Now, if I'm flipping mainly heavy cover, a little bit shallower, a lot of grass, I'm gonna flip a beaver style bait. And what this does, it's an extremely compact design, but still bulky. So I still feel like I can get some really good bites on this, but it's so compact and pretty streamlined. You can see this goes in and out of cover very, very well. So if I'm just trying to have like my normal flipping bait for all the circumstances, this is what I'm gonna do. I can flip this under a dock, I can skip it well, I can flip it in heavy cover, I can flip it in grass, flip it in everything that I'm trying to penetrate cover and with a half ounce weight that really pulls this bait through the cover really really well now the third one that i throw a quite a bit 
is a big hog style bait. This is a brush hog. Everybody has, every brand has one that's very, very similar. And the problem with this bait is it's so long. Whenever the hook and the weight's in this thing, it gets hung over so many branches and the weight, a half ounce weight is not strong enough to pull it through a lot of this thicker cover. So if I'm fishing, you know, a bush with a lot of really tight branches, this bait will not go through there as efficiently as one of them other two will. But this bait right here, if I'm fishing a lot of like, you know, deep lay down trees where there's got big, broad limbs and I'm clipping, I feel like the fish are suspended in it. This bait is very big and has a very consistent action with these tra with these tails and it falls relatively slowly. So whenever I flip it in there, if I'm trying to catch mostly suspended fish, like if they're big green trees or anything like that, that's just not a lot of cover going through, I'll flip this in a little bit deeper water but this is not a good bait for flipping around in very heavy vegetation. So that's my three baits I throw most of the time. Today I'm gonna rig up the beaver style bait because we're flipping a lot of grass, a lot of like heavy bushes. So that's what I'm gonna rig up. I'll show you kind of how I rig it. I just take this five volt uh, straight chain hook. I go in just past the barb of the hook. That's all I wanna do. Come straight out. As soon as the barb is inside the plastic, that's where I wanna come out at. Go up, turn the hook around to where you've got the bait keeper just right there underneath you know the pretty much the top of the beaver style bait i can take the bobber stop and push it down up against the the weight and the reason i do that for you is whenever i'm rigging this thing on it doesn't push the bait up so now that that uh weight is actually like a stopper so the bait never comes out of place up top so what that's going to do is as soon as i find the exact spot i want to hook it i'm going to be able to pinch this bait kind of roll it and i'm not going to worry about it pushing up over the shank of that hook so from right, that right there that one's not as straight as I want it to be. So I'm gonna take this out and redo it. Get this sucker perfectly straight. And that weight just helps so much with that because it just keeps your bait in place. And that right there is how I'm gonna be flipping. You know, today for the most part, I might flip to this right now with the water being a little bit low where we're at. You know, that would be a good thing to flip. So that's it. Leave this lay on the front deck. I'm talking about 365 days a year this sucker here is on my front deck. Basically, very very hot right now it's the middle of summer it's actually late summer it's august and the fish usually make a push back up shallow this time of year but you're not gonna get a ton of bites you see what i'm doing right here got a stump in the in the water right there we've got a creek mouth right here and that creek actually has a bit of stained water coming out whereas the main river right here has a lot of clear water in it so that's just a, a place where i feel like those shallow fish are gonna feel a little bit more comfortable and you got some isolated stumps you got some isolated rocks you got some trees up beside the bank it's gonna come in here and there's only if you look objectively at it there's only like one two three four five places where a fish could be in this you know 100 foot wide stretch so you can come through here and flip all this stuff in three or four minutes and have a really high percentage chance of catching one out of some of the stuff then go somewhere else so you can just imagine how many isolated pieces of cover you can actually flip in a day whenever the, the water's low like this or you have these conditions so let's flip around and hopefully catch a good one Beautiful spotted bass, but they're just small. It's kind of how it is in this part of the country, though. Not a lot of big spotted bass. You can see the bank around us. If you pan back that way, there's a lot of bank around us. It's not. Doesn't look like there'd be a fish anywhere. And then you pull up right here. There's just one bush in the water. Just obviously where a fish is going to be. If there's going to be a fish anywhere on here. And a lot of times when you find a place that looks that good, there'll actually be multiples under there. So you can sometimes flip up under there and catch two or three fish. It's rare that you catch more than that, but a lot of times you will catch two or three out of the same bush. So. Get back under there. Another big spot, dude. Heck yeah, that's a big spot. That was awesome. It's crazy. This place that we're fishing today usually has a, a good bit of current. And right, right now we don't have any current. We have a very small amount of the natural current. And that one, there's just an isolated stump in the water right there. I mean, you, it's again, you can look, that bush we just caught one off of right there. There's nothing in the water at all, except for a couple trees. And that stump is the furthest thing out, which is gonna make it high percentage. And we just call this nice spot. Man, this thing is beautiful. I, like, I love catching big spots, especially lakes like this. This is Chattahoochee where you don't catch a lot of big spots. It ain't like the Coosa River where this is a small one. This is actually a really nice spot for this part of the country so beautiful fish that's over a two pounder for sure right there it's probably right around a two and a quarter 
So that's just awesome. These things are so fat, so dense. Beautiful fish, beautiful colorations on them. It's really important if you're going to be a, a flipper like I am. I love to flip all over the country. It's actually one of my favorite things to do on, in a tournament. It's really important to be able to flip both handed. And what I mean by that is you can flip right handed, like right there at the edge of that hydrilla. And then if you had that the wrong angle, like if I want to go to that bush right there, I'll just reel it up and pitch it over there left handed and get it in there really quietly either way. It's a big key to get it in, in the water extremely quietly and very accurately. And you really need to be able to do it with both hands so you, you're never in a position where you can't get somewhere that you want to get. And one of the big deals is you don't want to be at a bad angle whenever you hook the fish. Like you don't want your bait to be like your line to be like around something. So you need to be able to get in there from all angles. So whenever you set the hook and get the fish out, you can get the fish out from a clean pathway. That's one of the, that's one of the deals that you've always got to remember is like you got to land the fish out of that heavy cover. So you need to get it in there in a way where you, there's a straight line back to you. And got interrupted by a little bass, but always fun. That one was actually out of another high percentage area. It was a isolated clump of hydrilla kind of out from the bank. And there's not a lot of that. Like if you look, you can see the bank, the bottom is all the way down through here. And that was one clump of hydrilla that I just pitched over behind and he was hiding up under it. So always fun to catch them. But the point I was making was you need to have a clean pathway to get the fish out of the cover and to your boat without having to go around something or over something and be able to cast both hands and get in there accurately is a huge key for that. You're going to land a lot more fish that you get to bite. See him? Came off. That gum it. There's another one. Caught it flipping up there. So now the conditions we have is the water's actually ro risen. So risen, rose, whatever you're supposed to say. The water's high now. And now we're getting up closer to the bank and pitching in these current eddies. So a little one. one. One pounder, maybe a little bit bigger than that, but he bit the old flipping bait. Got to jerk him out of there on a seven foot six rod. That's a, the most fun way to fish for sure. The water came up. I instantly had to pick up a frog and go to catching some on top water. Y'all know how it is, but hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully, if you wanted to learn a little bit about flipping, I told you a little bit about flipping. And if you didn't want to learn anything about flipping, at least you got to see the way I kind of go about it and got to see me catch a few fish. One thing I wanted to mention is whenever you're flipping in that super heavy cover with a snail knot and a big five volt hook, a lot of times the plastic is not super, super thick, so you can never make any sudden movement. So whenever you're going in and out of a tree or in and out of some of them bushes, you can never pull too hard. You have to pull like a very smooth, you can pull kind of firmly, but you have to pull smooth to get in and out of the cover without ever actually getting the hook point to go through and get you hung up. So remember that whenever you're flipping in heavy cover, it's all about finesse, about getting your bait in and out. Try to do it very smoothly and don't do any sudden movements. It's like you're uh, encountering a bear, no sudden movements. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate y'all watching. Like 70% of y'all are not subscribed, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'll see y'all in the next one.